Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship this morning with North Little Rock First United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Lynn Kilborn, and it is a joy to gather for worship with you this morning. I'm thankful not only to have you here, but I'm also thankful to be joined this morning by our worship leaders, by Stephen Carr and John Knorr. Our associate pastor, Pastor Annie Langford. One of our children's ministers, Megan Hurston, will be sharing a children's moment. And I'm always grateful for Jay Wedeman, who is running our camera and making all of the technology work and happen for us this morning. I'm grateful as well for all the staff of our church who are continuing to do amazing work in making God's love known throughout our congregation and in our community. I want to call your attention to our link tree. You can find a link to our the link to our link tree in the comments. When you click on the link tree, it will take you to all of the active links that we have going on right now, including a link to our connect card. As you click on the connect card, you'll be invited to share your your contact information with us, and we would love to have your contact information to know that you're worshiping with us this morning, but most importantly, give us a way that we can be in contact with you so that we can know how we can be in ministry with you. So thank you for taking time to fill out the Connect card. And in that same spirit, I invite you to, to check in through those comments on Facebook, greeting one another um, now and throughout the worship service. I'll also call your attention to just a couple of announcements. This afternoon, we are having our, a service of hope and healing. This is a service that we have each year during this season because we know that while the holiday season and the, the, the days till Christmas are, are supposed to be a time of joy for many, for many of us, especially in the kind of year that we've had, many of us are carrying grief into the holiday time. During the service, we will have special times of prayer, We'll hear music, scripture, and a reflection, and celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion together. The service is a drive-in service at 3 o'clock this afternoon. We are aware that there may be some rain this afternoon. Still, feel, still we invite you to join us. The service is going to happen, rain or shine. And speaking of drive-in services... You were invited to join us for worship on Christmas Eve at one of our two drive-in worship services. At 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock Christmas Eve, we will have outdoor drive-in worship services where we celebrate the coming of Christ on Christmas. We'll celebrate these um, in a new way, but with many of our familiar traditions. We will hear carols, celebrate communion together, and we will still sing Silent Night by Candlelight. You're invited to join us at either of those worship services, or should you feel um, more comfortable staying home, we will also have a 7 o'clock worship service on Facebook Live here on our Facebook page, and it will be available on YouTube shortly after. So I hope that you will worship with us this Christmas Eve. Well, friends, we have gathered together this morning for worship. So let us gather our hearts and our minds together in an attitude of prayer as we begin our service gathering around the Advent wreath. As we prepare to light the candle of hope, hear these words from Luke's gospel. With all my heart, I glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior, he has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone can, will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. We light this candle as a reminder of the power of love, which comes to us just as we are and fills every corner of our hearts, bringing light wherever there is darkness. Eternal God, we stand in awe of your overwhelming love. It is frightening to welcome it, to allow ourselves to be fully loved just as we are, 
to say yes to your love without knowing where it will lead us. By your grace, fill us with love and drive out all the darkness in our hearts that we may say yes to you and bring your love to others. Amen. The God of abundance lays the bounty of all creation before us, strengthens us when we are weak, and fills us when we are hungry. Let us deeply and joyfully share all that has been given to us. Thank you for the continued giving towards the work of this church. God only wise, Accept these offerings, the fruit of our labor and the fruit of our lives in obedience of our faith through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I invite you to pray with me. Two weeks, Lord, two weeks. Can we get all of the things done that we have set before us? Have all of the cards been mailed and the greetings extended? 
the gatherings coordinated or not, and things placed in our calendar for this last rush before that big day? Have we forgotten anything? Have we forgotten anyone? It would be easy to say we have forgotten the reason for the season. That phrase which is imprinted on keychains and coffee mugs. We think that if we post the note that says Jesus is the reason for the season, we will truly be fulfilling our Christmas commitment. How foolish we are. Placing the words on the wall, taped to the bulletin board, on a refrigerator, does not place the words in our hearts. We replace the glorious story of God's incarnate word with tinsel and wrapping paper and believe that we are ready to celebrate. When will we learn? Come to us now, comforting God with your powerful words of healing. Help us to remember the witness of Mary, a young girl who never expected to play such a role in salvation history. Put the brakes on our rushing and sit us down to hear the story of your absolute love for us. Get us ready for the birth of your son who will become our savior. Move us from the focus of our festivities to a focus on witnessing about your love through serving others. Challenge us to reach out to people in need, not only with a check to support a particular endeavor, but with actual contact in ministries of sacrifice and of service. In such times as this, remind us that we are called to proclaim your love through witness and through service. We pray all of these things in the name of the one who modeled your sacrificial love on earth, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Love divine. All love excel, joy of hell to earth come down. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faith holds mercy's crown. Jesus, thou art all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter trembling heart. Breathe, oh, breathe thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit. Let us find our promised rest. Take away the love of sinning. Alpha and Omega be End of faith as its beginning set our hearts at liberty. Finish 
Christ then, thy new creation, pure and spotless, let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place till we cast our crowns before thee lost in wonder, love, and praise. The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ. I invite you to confess your sins to our loving God. It's harder and harder to focus on the true meaning of Christmas, the incarnation of God's love in the birth of God's Son, Jesus Christ. We are caught in the web of festivities, of gifts, of glitter, we have to admit that we really do enjoy all these holiday opportunities. But as we get closer to the big family celebrations and the actual celebration of Christmas, we begin to wonder how we are going to survive it all. We say to ourselves, we won't let this stress happen to us again, but we know better. We allow ourselves to be continually drawn into the demands of others, leaving little or no time for ourselves, our families, and especially for you, God. Gracious, gracious God, forgive us. You are all too familiar with our reasons and our excuses for what is happening. Help us to make some changes in our lives and our focus so that this time of celebration may have the deepest sense of joy and purpose, not just be the rush and the clamor of yet another holiday season. Keep us focused on the eternal yes response to your call to us to live our lives as those who would joyfully serve you. Heal and comfort us. Heal and comfort us, Lord, this day and always. For we ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Friends, God does not remember our sins, but God does remember the promises which have been made to us. God does not shame us, but lifts us to new life. Remember, you are loved. Remember, you are loved are forgiven. Amen. Hey, good morning, guys. I'm so glad you're here because I have the craziest dream to share with you. Have you ever had a crazy dream? Well, this morning I woke up and all I could remember was this giant jar of donut holes. Weird, I know. Really made me want a big mug of hot cocoa, though. But you know, I've had some other pretty crazy dreams in my life. I remember when I was little, like, I don't know, four or five, I used to dream that I was superwoman. And one time I even tried to jump off my front porch and fly. It didn't go so well. But that brings me to our story today. It's from Luke chapter one, verses 26 through 38. And it's all about Mary and Joseph and the dream and the visit that they got that seemed a little bit crazy. I don't know about as crazy as donut holes, but let me just read it to you. You'll see. I'm gonna read and I'll show you the pictures, but there's a lot of words. So I may show you the pictures and then read or read and then show you the pictures. You know, just hang in there with me. It's called the angel visit. And it's from my Spark Story Bible on page 196 and it ends on page 200. And it goes something like this. Mary was a young woman. She lived in a town called Nazareth and was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. Well, one day, a tall, handsome man appeared in front of Mary. His clothes were brilliant white. His hair was dark and curly and his eyes sparkled like lights. Mary knew the man must be an angel. 
Hello, Mary, he said. God is with you. Mary stepped backwards. His deep voice had scared her. Don't be afraid, he said. God sent me to tell you that you are going to have a son who you'll name Jesus. He's going to be very important to many people. A son? But I'm not even married yet, said Mary. How is that going to happen? It's a little bit tricky. Let me show you the picture first and then I'll read. So there's Mary. Oh, too close. And she's talking with the angel. Let's see what he says. The Holy Spirit will come to you, the angel replied. Your son will be the son of God. The son of God, Mary thought. She thought a lot about that. It didn't seem possible, but she believed anything was possible with God. I am God's servant, she said. I'll do whatever God says. But her mind was racing. What's Joseph gonna think? Will he believe me? Mary was really nervous. Well, when Mary told Joseph about the angel and about giving birth to God's son, he did just what she was afraid he would do. He didn't believe her. He talked about not marrying her anymore. Mary felt so sad. But then she remembered what the angel had said and she trusted God. The next day, something wonderful happened. Joseph came to her and said, an angel came to me in a dream. He said, Joseph, don't be afraid to make Mary your wife. She is going to have a son and you're going to name him Jesus. He's going to save people from their sins. Well, Mary smiled a big smile. She was so happy that tears of joy trickled down her cheeks and filled her eyes. She felt Joseph's love again. I'm not scared for you to be my wife, Mary, he said. I will be with you and we will name the boy Jesus. I'm going to show you this picture. They look so happy. I think Mary's about to do a happy dance. But I think I could understand. If you have something important to share with someone, sometimes it can be a little bit scary. But that's when you can trust in God. All right? Just like Mary and Joseph did. Well, that's the end of my story for today. But... Don't forget, if you haven't been by the church to pick up your worship bag, there's a special craft. It's underneath the tub because it's a little too big to fit in our bags this week. But it's your very own nativity scene. So if you haven't been by the church to pick it up, don't forget. Hope you have a great last week of school before Christmas break, and I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye, friends.
Today's scripture reading is out of the book of Luke, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we reflect upon God's word, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing unto you. For you, O God, are this community's rock and redeemer. Amen. There was a moment in time where all of history, the salvation of the world, hung on the response of one woman. The angel Gabriel came to a young Mary and announced to her that she had been chosen to bring into the world the one who would bring hope to the world to carry in her womb the one who would carry her people to salvation, to nurture the one who would nurture the least, the last, and the lost. The angel made this announcement, and Mary said, yes. Have you ever wondered, though, what would have happened had Mary said no? What would have happened if the angel Gabriel showed up and made the big announcement only to be met with a thanks, but no thanks? What if Mary had responded, wow, I'm so flattered to be asked, but I'm no thank you. I just don't really see myself as the mother to the savior of the world. Or what if she said, mm, no thank you, that's really not what I had in mind for my life right now. Now, maybe it seems a, a little bit blasphemous to spend too much time pondering the what ifs. But truth be told, I think we could all understand the reasons Mary would have, might have, to want to say no. We could make a whole list of reasons that Mary might have wanted to say no to the angel's ask, to God's call. First, Mary was young and engaged, not yet married, in a time when sexual impurity would have, could have cost her her life. This news of a pregnancy might not have been received well by family and, and her community. And pregnancy? Pregnancy is... At the, at the minimum, it's exhausting, and at its extreme, it's dangerous. The angel never promises her security or survival. 
He does tell her that she is favored by God and that the Holy Spirit will be with her, but noticeably absent is any assurance that Mary will live to see the ministry her son will have in the world. Yeah, it's easy to come up with a a whole list of reasons that Mary might have had, understandable reasons that she might have wanted to say no. The challenge is understanding her yes. I've been listening to podcast by Emily P. Freeman. And I shared a quote with you in, in a sermon a few weeks ago from one of her, one of her episodes. And, and in another episode, she talks about the pros and cons of pro-con lists. How many of you have made one of these lists? When you've faced a big decision and you can't decide, you take out a sheet of paper and you make two columns and you begin on one side, you have your pros and you list all of the pros to the decision. And on the other side, you list the cons. Or maybe you start vice versa and you list all the cons. Then you list all of the pros. And a lot of people, they they think about a pro-con list in this way, that the side with the most points or the side with the most entries wins. But this assumes that every point, every reason is equal. And we know that's not true. When I envision Mary's pro-con list, had she had time to make one, I envision a con side with (laughs) just a long list of reasons. But then I see on the other side, the pros, I see just one simple entry reminding us that All entries are not equal. That one reason, the one reason that outweighs all the other cons, that one reason for Mary is love. Mary said yes to God's call out of love. This whole story, the the call itself, her decision, none of it makes any sense without love. It begins with God's love, God's love for humanity, because God loved, God loves humanity so much that, that God decided to become one of us and enter into our world, to experience our world, to save our world. And God loved Mary so much that God chose Mary to be the one to bring the Savior into the world. And God's love? is met by Mary's love, Mary's love of God and love of neighbor. You can hear it in that that brief conversation that she has with Gabriel. After Gabriel makes the announcement, and while he waits, perhaps with bated breath on what she'll say, she asks one question. She doesn't ask what's in it for her. She doesn't ask, what this will mean for her life. She simply asks, how? And after Gabriel explains to her the power of the Holy Spirit, Mary says, yes. She says, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me as you have said. She said, yes all out of love. Mary had an altogether love. Throughout this season, throughout the Advent series and season, we've been remembering a sermon by John Wesley, his sermon, Almost Christian. In this sermon, Wesley warns that that many Christians are but almost Christians, that they go through the motions of faith, but are lacking love of God, love of neighbor, and a trust in God. He says, on the other hand, on the other hand, instead of being an almost Christian, we're called to be an altogether Christian, one who doesn't just go through the motions of faithfulness, but 
whose lives and decisions are all informed by love of God, love of neighbor, and trust in God. And just as we can have an incomplete faith, just as we can be an almost Christian, we can have an incomplete love. We can have an almost love. An almost love focuses on what's in it for me. An almost love focuses on all of the cons. An almost love focuses on how irrational love of God and love of neighbor can be. It's irrational to give our own money to help someone else. It's irrational to spend our time serving someone else who may be lazy or undeserving. It's irrational to turn the other cheek. It's irrational to give someone our coat. It's irrational to walk the extra mile. Are these starting to sound familiar? The ways, the love to which Jesus calls us will always be irrational to the world. But this is the love to which Jesus calls us. He calls us to an altogether love. And when we have an altogether love, we realize that saying yes to God, yes to living and serving as Jesus taught, when we say yes and when we love in this way, we're joining God in God's work of salvation in the world, making God's love known to others. We are, we are putting God's love into action. Maybe, maybe that's the best way to think about an altogether love. An altogether love is love in action. There's a Catholic church in San Francisco that, had, that always serves a meal to people in need. On one particular day, a man joined them for the meal. This man was newly released from jail. And while he was eating his meal, he noticed a woman working with the mission nearby. She was cleaning one of the tables. And he asked her, when am I supposed to help you start clean? When am I supposed to help you clean? She shrugged and said, you're not. Used, he continued, okay, well, when, when's the sermon? Again, she looked at him confused and said, there's not one. And he said, okay, fine, well, when's the lecture on better living? She responded again, there's not going to be one. Finally, the man was utterly confused. And so he said, okay, fine, then, then what's, what's the gimmick? She pointed to a Latin phrase above a door frame. The Latin phrase, caritate dei. The man looked at it <laughs> and with another confused look on his face said, what's that mean? And the woman responded, for love of God. For love of God. I believe this inscription was written upon Mary's heart. For love of God, this is the inscription written upon the hearts of all who seek to have an altogether love. May it be written upon our hearts. Amen. came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold peace on the earth good will to men from 
from hymns of gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled and still their heavenly music floats for all the weary world above its sad and lowly plains they bend on And ever o'er its babel sounds the blessed angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophets but foretold when with the end around the age of gold when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors flee and the whole world give back the song which now Thank you for worshiping with us this morning, my friends. I look forward to seeing some of you this afternoon at 3 o'clock for our drive-in service of hope and healing. And I'll also remind you to come drive by the church some evening this week to see our new Christmas decorations that we have put out. And I hope that as these decorations um, fill you with joy and warm your heart, may they also remind you that though our church building is closed, our church, our ministry is very much alive. May you receive this benediction. Friends, we have received the gifts of peace, hope, and joy. Go from this time to share these gifts with others. And may the light of Christ, the lights of hope, peace, and love, may they light your way and may they guide you to serving others in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.